I wanted to talk to you guys today about how different types of taxes affect the supply curve. I think this is one of those times where it's probably a touch easier to use Excel, so I thought I would do it this way instead. What we're looking at here is we see a normal supply schedule. I can scroll through there, so we're going from a, high val a low value to a high value. And as expected, we're following our law of supply. The formula is written here. So we're going up by two for every single change in price. So the price goes up one yuan, or is it one yin? Same symbol. Anyhow, it goes up one and we get supply going up by two, et cetera, et cetera. Now remember what we said was that with a specific tax, all that's going to change is the price that it takes for the supplier to supply the certain amount. So if before, for them to supply four, it took one yuan, well now it's going to take one yuan fifty, right? Because the fifty cents is going to be sent to the, to the government. So to the supplier, one fifty actually equals just one. So keep that in mind and then the difference between a specific tax and an ad valorem tax was simply how much tax was applied. So here, instead of it being 50 cents, it's going to be 25%. So if it was going to take one, uh, one yuan for the producer to supply four, well, one yuan plus 25% equals 125. So that means they'll raise their price to 125 in order to, do, to supply four. One thing we can note right off the bat is that you get a different effect here and here. In each case, for them to supply two takes a price of nothing. Well, again, I don't really like that concept, but now it would take a price of 50 cents or whatever half a yuan is. Whereas here, nothing times 25% still equals 25%. So you see that these two curves are gonna start in the same spot. The other thing worth noting is that this, uh, this value, 150, is higher than 125, but then 250 and 250 are the same. And then after that, the value in the left column is going to be less than the value in the right column. So we see this supply curve, price plus ad valorem, is rising more steeply, whereas this, uh, price plus specific tax, is just going to be a translation of the original curve. So let's go ahead and look at what that looks like on a diagram. What we can see is here's the original supply curve in blue. And again, the specific tax of 50 cents, we see that that's here labeled a little bit more accurately. The specific tax of 50 cents has shifted the original supply curve up by 50 cents. So the vertical distance between each of these would be a distance of 50 cents on the, uh, the y-axis over here. Whereas the gray curve, which is the ad valorem tax, now it is shifted up by 25%. So what we see is that it is going to be steeper than the original supply curve because at each point it's 25% higher. So obviously, um, you know, as we get further to the right, 25% is a, is a greater amount. So, in comparing the effects of um, the two taxes, it's important to think about where the demand curve might be. So if we had a demand curve that was in, was like what we see here, well, we can see that the result would be on the ad valorem tax, which is the gray one, the result on equilibrium would actually be less here, that is, there would be less of a change, we would travel up the demand curve less, than if we went all the way up to here where the specific tax was. So this would correlate to that first spot where um, with the ad valorem tax, it's, uh, the price would be 125, but with the specific tax, it would be uh, 150. If instead the demand curve was here, well now we see that the effect would be the same on both, uh, both the ad valorem and on the specific tax. And if the demand curve was way out here to the right, now we see that the effect on the market is going to be greater. That is, we're going to slide further up the demand curve with the ad valorem tax in gray 
than we will with the uh, specific tax, the orange dots. So the effect on the market outcome obviously is going to be very dependent on where, um, on where the demand curve is. If the demand curve is further to the right, the greater the effect of the ad valorem tax. But because the ad valorem tax is always going to start with the supply curve, if you move it far enough to the left, you will find that in some cases, the effects of the ad valorem tax will be a little bit less significant. But in most cases, and I think your standard analysis, you're going to want to talk about the specific tax having less effect than the ad valorem tax. Of course, it's not a rule. You actually have to do the math and see what the outcomes will be.